Welcome to uh, the neighborhood council. There must be a lot on the agenda. Um, we're going to uh, um, do a roll call, starting from my right. State rep is here tonight. Aaron asked to uh, have a few minutes, so we're going to uh, let him uh, uh, speak um, at this particular time. This is when we have our, uh, our reports from our local elected officials. So, if Aaron, you want to? Sure. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, real quick, uh, first, I wanted to come here and, and congratulate all of you uh, for taking on the task of doing uh, being on the neighborhood council for another year. Uh, I appreciate it as, as your uh, local elected official, the work that you guys do uh, on, an, on a monthly basis here uh, for the neighborhood. And you know, I look forward to working with you over, the, especially for the new people. Uh, I look forward to working with you over the next year on, you know, trying to work on all the issues that we deal with here in the neighborhood, quality of life issues, uh, development, and uh, everything that comes with that. So I, I first want to thank you. My second reason for coming to uh, the council today was to talk a little bit about the uh, the movement on the Greenway legislation that I originally filed uh, last year, and that we had we had some discussions about uh, with the council and with uh, the resident association. Uh, we've, we've taken a different step now uh, with, the, uh, with the legislation. We uh, moved it in a transportation bond bill in the House about two, uh, two or three weeks ago. Uh, and with it, it uh, we, we left the funding issue alone, uh, the funding issue, which is obviously the most controversial piece of the Greenway legislation. Uh, we left that alone, but we tried to tackle some of the other issues, one being neighborhood involvement and one being the transparency issue. The neighborhood involvement uh, is uh, what we're what we're trying to do with this with this legislation now, and it's just so we're clear, it's onto the Senate now. It hasn't passed fully; it just passed the House, and it's onto the Senate. Um, what we're trying to do is change the board of directors on the on the Greenway uh, uh, Conservancy. Uh, currently, there are 15 members of the conserv uh, Greenway Conservancy uh, board, uh, but but over uh, nine of them, I think, are appointed within the conservancy themselves. Others are elected official uh, appointments. I have one appointment myself. Uh, but what we decided to do is add local neighborhood associations to give them a, a seat at the table at the, on the board of directors for the Greenway Conservancy. Uh, it is seven neighborhood groups, the neighborhood council being one of them, the resident association being another, uh, along with the Wharf District Council, uh, the Leather District Neighborhood Association, and then two neighborhood, um, two neighborhood associations in Chinatown. Uh, we're trying to give a balanced board of directors so this way we have a bigger seat at the table for the neighborhoods to have more of a, a, a say in the decision making process that goes on along the Greenway. I think you know the, the, the idea behind it, which was originally really the reason why I started filing legislation was to begin with, was to get a, you know the, 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 rep, the neighborhoods that, that live along the Greenway to give them a better I, a, idea of what's going on, to give them a better say on what goes on in the future. Um, and I think that that is something that we're trying to do with all those neighborhoods surrounding the Greenway, obviously the North End being and the waterfront being major components of that. But uh, those, that was the idea behind changing the board. The way the board would be would be 21 members, and the neighborhood groups would basically have seven rep representatives of that board, so basically about a third, which would obviously give them a large and meaningful and powerful voice going forward. The second point of the legislation was to create more transparency, and we did so by adding that they not only are they subject to the open meeting laws, uh, if they find if they do sign a lease with the with the Department of Transportation on, on being in control of the land, but also that they would be subject to the public record laws. This would allow them allow the conservancy 
or force the conservancy to be basically uh, open up their books and explain every expenditure that takes place on the Greenway and what they're what they're spending it on, whether it be private dollars or public dollars. I think it was you know trying to open up the open up the windows, shine some more light on what's going on to make people feel more comfortable going forward that what the, what is going on in the Greenway is a positive and and and, um, and productive steps. And I think that we. Uh, one thing that we did exempt was the fundraising, the, uh, whatever they did with fundraising, uh, meaning if there was an anonymous donor, he could, he could remain anonymous. In this way, there would be no, you know, people could still give money without having to have their names put out in front. Most people usually like to say, usually like when they give money, they like to be known how they give money, but we obviously do have some people that do like to stay anonymous. And we want to keep that going because we want to be able to have the concerns you raise as much money as possible because obviously we want to see the, we want to see the Greenway succeed long term. Uh, Again, the last part of it being the funding, we decided to hold off on the funding. Uh, as I'm sure you've read in many, many uh, newspaper articles, funding is obviously a controversial issue. I'm a big supporter of, of, of state funding for the Greenway. I still continue to be. I think it's something that we're going to have to fight for down the road. I think right now is more, more step one, and we'll deal with that step as we go forward. So and here, I'm open to take any questions. I appreciate it, Stephen, uh, on, on giving me the opportunity to speak. And also, congratulations on, on your on your presence. Thank you so much. Question yeah. <laughs> I have a question, Aaron. Uh, on the uh, uh, anonymous donations, are, is, it, is it only anonymous donations that are not disclosed, or all fundraising that comes in is not disclosed? No, it, it mean, it, it really, it's really a, a, up to the conservancy at that point. If they want to acknowledge fundraising and, don and donations and people who donate, they can do so. Uh, just like any regular 501c3, people give give money to typical 501c3s. If people want to stay anonymous, they stay anonymous. If they don't want to stay anonymous, usually it's listed at, in their in their annual report, uh, you know, throughout the every year. <coughs> Did you want I guess there was some issue at the last, I wasn't there, but the last public safety meeting with regard to the um, visitor spot exemption for residents, uh, you know, I have it on, on pretty good authority that uh, that will still go forward. So I think there was some confusion among some of the, um, the meter uh, maids that were there. Uh, when it's going to go into effect, we're still not sure. I guess they have to make new signs in order uh, for this to, to take place. But it's my understanding that um, except for portions of Hanover Street and Salem Street, the majority of the visitor uh, parking spots in the north end will be, uh, the two hour limit will be exempt for, for residents. Yeah. Except for Hanover Street and what other street, right? P parts of Hanover and uh, parts of Salem. All set, Ryan? Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Um, David Marks is the um, chairman for our public safety committee. He probably has a report on this one. Yes, I do. Thank you, Steve. The number one thing that I can that I can share from last Thursday's public safety meeting is that from January to May of this year, compared to January through May of last year, there has been overall a 25% reduction in crime in the North End. Of course, that does not in any way, shape, or form detract or take away, I should say, from the quality of life issues that continue to confront the North End on a pretty much weekly basis at the very least. The highlight as far as re arrests were concerned took place at an address that was given to us as 462 Hanover Street, but we're going to try to contact Sergeant Lima uh, as early as tomorrow to get a, a confirmation because apparently that address doesn't exist. But I, either way, all the way at the end of Hanover Street in the wee hours of July 4th, so about 12.25 a.m. on July 4th. A couple patrol officers were walking down Hanover Street. Next thing you know, one beer bottle gets thrown off a roof deck, then a second, and it went from there. Police officers ordered everyone down from the roof deck. Two people were arrested, one of whom was charged with a felony. This day identified themselves as students, both from Cambridge. One was 20 years old, one was 22 years old. The 20-year-old apparently had a fake or doctored ID. Uh, as far as some of the crimes are concerned, no homicides, no sexual assaults, no robberies. Last year, uh, at this time, there was one robbery. Two aggravated assaults, that's up by one. Three bait breaking and enterings, that's up by one. One auto theft, that's down by one. Uh, larcenies, not including car breaks, six compared to five. 
larcenies from a motor vehicle, four compared to seven last year. No graffiti incidents, no community disorder incidents. Seven motor vehicles were towed compared to nine at this time last year. And they are still giving out a lot of parking citations, 313 over the last month. 58 motor vehicle violations, which is a separate category. Yes? You keep saying for next year, that's a 30-day report. 30, yes, compared to the same 30-day period last, last year. year. Yes. No. yes. So. Again, if you encounter anything, if you see anything, I know it goes without saying, the police really can't do anything unless you contact them, make them aware. And in the last 30 days, there were, as far as the 911 calls concerned for loud party calls, there were eight loud party calls all between 12 a.m. and 4 a.m. Some of the addresses included 64 North Margin Street, 57 Fleet Street, 89 North Margin Street, 88 Endicott Street, 28 Fleet Street, and a few other addresses as well. The next meeting is Thursday, August 2nd at 6.30 p.m. here. The last thing I will tell you is they, the police are sending out what they call gang cars. Basically, that just means that they are targeting disorderly youth those cars, there are two of them, are out on Thursday nights, Friday nights, and Saturday nights from 7.45 p.m. until 3.45 p.m. You can also call um, the May's 24-hour hotline. It's at 635-4500. I've been having uh, a lot of luck personally with the, the hotline. I know some people don't particularly like the hotline, but um, I've, I've personally found it very useful over the last couple of months. Um, you can call Suffolk University. They have a loud potty car that travels the neighborhood <coughs> during the academic year, obviously, if you think they're students, or even if you don't think they're students. Uh, Richard Wheeler drives around with the Boston Police Department um, in, a in a car with a, a Boston Police Detective. And um, if they're students, they're written up, and the, the university has a, a whole procedure for the student. If it is, in fact, a Suffolk University student, that phone number is 617-549-7503. <coughs> And Rich Grealish will answer personally, and he's usually out to about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning um, on most weekends. Matter of fact, all weekends. Suffolk University has, a, uh, has made a pretty uh, good commitment to the neighborhood. And, you know, if you give them a buzz, they, uh, they respond. But always call 911 first all the time. Um, and we have a committee, uh, Greenway committee report, though? Yeah. Um, once again, Jody Wallen from the Greenway is here tonight with us, and she's been making it. Uh, most of the meetings recently, that's great to have her here. Um, a few things, I don't know, some of you may have seen the flash forward photos on the Greenway recently. I think that was a great idea. Um, I just saw some friends, it was kind of fun to do. Um, the Berkeley Summer Concert Series is going on uh, through the middle of August, every Friday evening. Um, that's in the Wharf District Parks uh, between State and Milk Street. Check out the music, it's free. Uh, Berkeley, of course, is always an excellent uh, play, a place to hear some great music and have it come to our neighborhood. It's fantastic. The Greenway Open Market is uh, continuing to operate on Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, runs from State Street down to High Street along the Greenway. There's 25 to 60 vendors, depending on the weekend. Uh, there's There have been a number of uh, food carts continuing to operate, food trucks and carts of all sorts of varieties, from franks and beans to uh, uh, grilled cheese, but uh, the Anthem cart should be starting soon. The Yotaco cart should be coming soon to various parts of the Greenway. Um, remember the Farmer's Market is open 11 to 7 every Tuesday and Thursday down in Dewey Square. They'll be doing some planting on Parcel 15, um, some new, uh, some new uh, horticultural installments there. Also, I wanted to point out, some of you may have seen uh, the Globe had a feature on the uh, carousel that's being designed to come to the, uh, the Greenway parcel 14 and Jody has uh, a Xerox of the article uh, you can check it out online if you subscribe to the Globe or if you can get the, get it somehow online but she's got a great copy and the, green, the, the carousel is scheduled probably depending on funding Jody tells me to be functioning next year probably summer to fall depending on the speed of the fundraising so that should be great and the, the, uh, she has also a couple of brochures with her tonight one off programming in the Greenway this season and one on the, the uh, carousel. So be sure to meet Jody before you leave. Jody, stand up and wave a hand there. Hi, everyone. And I'm also a resident of the North End. I'm at 130 Friends. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank 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 you. So we're going to get going with the agenda. And, uh, first on the agenda is uh, 536 Commercial Street. Um, 
I don't know how to say the last name. I apologize. Could you say it so I don't? It's Salaji. Mike Salaji. Michael Salaji. Um, the, the applicant is uh, seeking permission to construct a new wood deck on the existing roof and four-story single-family uh, building and to increase the size of the existing headhouse in order to house a new coat and client staircase up to the new roof deck. New homeowners, new homeowners are in the process of converting an existing three-family building into a single-family residence. Those roof deck will be for their private use only, which we will be occupied. So, um, um, Tony's going to accuse herself from this particular um, application, but um, they can, uh, you can go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, for the record, uh, Daniel Toscano, attorney at law, has an office located at 60, 62D Commercial Walk East, Boston, Mass. 02110. Phone number six phone number six one seven six four six four four two eight. To my immediate right is Dr. Uh, Peggy Khan, who is the owner of the uh, 536 Commercial Street, and we've met the architect Michael, who has applied uh, for the ISD application, and Michael has some drawings that he'll share with the board uh, tonight. We we are seeking uh, support to um, alter the head house of the existing building and also add a two-tier roof deck for the exclusive use of Dr. Khan. Um, Dr. Khan, he bought the building. It was a three-family residential dwelling located on Commercial Street. Uh, we have changed the occupancy, which was as of right, to a single family occupied the entire building, um, single family residential dwelling, also to add parking on the first floor, which was also as of right. The violations that were seeking relief from the Board of Appeals comes into play when the stairs from the third floor up to the roof um, are not in compliance with the code. Um, under the Builders Code, I think it's the uh, Builders Code 8. It's uh, in Massachusetts, it's 8th uh, edition. 8th edition. So we're at the 8th edition. It's not in compliance with the code. So we have to fix the stairs going up to the stairwell. So in order to fix the stairs, it created um, created an occurrence where we needed to alter the head house, to increase the head house to be um, comply with the staircase. So it so allow us uh, enough room to go up. So the head house is gonna be altered approximately 30 square feet. It's gonna be located at the same particular spot as you see it on the um, photos. What you have in front of you, I showed a packet in front of you, is the front photo of the building as so we all know where this location is directly across the street from Poplar Park and to our left looking at the uh, photo is Cops Hill uh, Slide Park as you all know the second picture that you're looking at is the elevations of the existing building the elevations of the building are not changing the building height is 45 uh, feet tall not including the head house if you include the head house it's going to be approximately 53 um, 53 feet which is below the 55 foot height restriction we have in the neighborhood. However, for code compliance, um, the head house is not included in calculating the height. So the height of the existing building is remaining the same at 45 feet. The third picture you'll see is the, the stairway, that's the new stairway that's going in the exact same spot that it is now, and only is gonna be brought up to code. Um, the fourth picture you have is gonna be the two-tier deck, as you see, in, We'll explain to you why it's a two-tiered deck as the roof slopes, so we're able to adjust the roof. So it's the, um, the roof deck is done in compliance with the code, the, the dimensions that the code allows us to build the roof deck. The roof deck is built in compliance with the code. And the last picture is some existing photos of, of the roof. Now you'll see, um, if I take it from the back, actually, forward, you'll see the existing head house. The existing head house is not going to change much. It's certainly it's going to look a lot nicer than it does does today. It's going to extend from maybe a foot higher and out maybe 18 inches to the right. So that's approximately 30 square feet um, of space. It's not living space. It's not for not any living space that we're going to for this particular location. It's just to comply with the existing stair, the stairs that we need to put. The roof deck that we like to construct is, and then I'll let Mike go over the dimensions with you and some photos that you can see, is a two-tier roof deck. We do have residents, and I'm sure we're gonna hear some concerns, there are some concerns of possible new roof deck with some noise um, to our, for our abutters, and also some views that possibly will be obstructed with this um, 
the new roof deck. We're certainly work, looking to work with the neighborhood, look, work with the abutters. But as of what we did right now, we built a makeshift model of what the roof deck may look like um, from the abutters' view so they can take a look at it. So hopefully we'll hear the concerns from them today. And I do see many of the abutters at 540 Commercial Street here, so I'm sure we will hear the concerns. Um, as of right now, the majority of the renovations are done. Um, Dr. Khan expects to be living in the establishment um, by the end of this summer, early fall, if I'm correct. And, uh, and we have a hearing date of August the 7th at the, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals. The notice requirements were sent out on June the 15th, which encompassed uh, really this, the block of Cox Hill and Terrence, Ch Lower Charter Street and Commercial Street in a circular um, address locations. That was sent out, and I can tell you we've been before the North End Residents Association DLC subcommittee, and it was brought to our attention. There are concerns. We certainly want to work with our reporters um, in regards to addressing those concerns, so I'll open it up to some questions, uh, and I can also, any questions we can refer, we have some photos for you that maybe be a little bit better for your viewing that the architect has had. Just so people know, we, the, the council will ask some questions first, and then obviously we will we'll open it to uh, abutters and the general public. Um, does anyone on the phone have any questions? Just thank you, Sam. Good. Good. towards the rear. Um, it's about a 12 inch drop from the front to the back. Um, in order to make it work with the new deck and uh, in compliance with, I believe it's the zoning ordinance, uh, a maximum of 12 inches to the finished uh, roof deck off of the existing deck. Um, we tiered it front to back so that there's a lower portion at the back um, where, the, where the roof is lower. There's an eight inch step up to a higher roof at the front. So it's compliant with the dimensions of the code that a roof deck is allowed up to one foot higher than the existing roof. So that's why it's tiered up one eight inches. And I can up. pass this along. There's a there's a drawing in the bottom uh, right hand corner that shows a cross section of the um, the construction, where will the material be staged on the ground for how long and what will be the construction impacts on the um, I don't think there'll be any material uh, off off site for any longer than getting it up to the roof. Uh, the roof right now is large enough to, to handle the, uh, the lumber necessary to build the roof deck. Uh, and uh, I'd have to confirm with the contractor, but I don't believe he anticipates any more than a three or four day total construction. At, at some point during the renovation period, there was scaffolding up there, there was a dumpster at one point, but that is it's gone, no scaffolding is down, um, dumpster is gone, so uh, probably won't be anything else stored on this side. Uh, there might be some scaffolding on the side, once we renovate the side of that building. That scaffolding is actually up. Yeah, that scaffolding is up, but that's private owned property, which we did get permission from that lane on it, so we can repair the wall on the side. When's your day? I've got a day at the August 7th. August 7th. Sean, Sean, I just wanted to know, uh, I see you have a six foot fence going along 540, and this yeah. may be brought up by the abutters, but what yeah. kind of impact will that have on the, the windows that, you know, the residents that already exist there? Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, that's an issue that we're torn as to what to do. We certainly wanted to create some privacy for the existing abutter that lives at 540. Um, you'll see two windows uh, yep. right there, uh, and, and the new residents, the new owner, Mr. Dr. Khan. So we developed what's called, it's just a privacy wall. It's a, it's a wood fencing, six foot fence that's gonna be not parallel to, his, to 540 Commercial Street, but come out a little. Uh, it comes out at an angle. Um, comes out at an angle too, so we don't obstruct any views. This is a makeshift of what it, what it looks like, and certainly we wanna hear from the abutters 
now that it's been construction, it's been up for about a week, want to hear from the abutters as to so put that up their to the Exactly. Who else from the council? Any Ryan, a question? Any abutters here? I'm just curious, how do you intend, as the, for the owner, like how, what are you intending with the use of I see some lounge chairs and some tables, I'm just curious. Just to enjoy the outside space. It's a beautiful view. Right, Constitution, park, lodging court. I mean, that's the, the lounge chairs that you see there are just decorative for, right. for the drawers. It's not necessarily a chair that's going to go there, but certainly, certainly something. But you plan on entertaining or having people over? Have, I mean, no, seriously, even as an owner occupied. Well, as an owner occupied, if you have guests and you sit out and enjoy the view, that's entertaining. But in terms of loud music and rock and roll, it's strictly just not going to Anyone else in the council before I open it up to abutters? Or any abutters here that has a question for Mr. Toscano or the uh, owner? Sure. Name and address, please. I'm Reginald Green. Uh, I live at 540 Commercial Street. And the windows in discussion are those that I've lived in for next year will be 30 years. Uh, I, I brought some photographs to show you what it looks like from the inside okay. before, the, before the fence was put up us to see and uh, uh, before the deck proposed deck uh, is built and we'll give you some idea of the seals big pardon seals yeah thank you let's see how much yeah yeah that's good uh, con our concern is that the uh, the roof deck of course is right at the level closest to our level um, of, of our building um, and the first images on the, in that package show our living room with the chair and the windows and with the wall, the fence, uh, out, out of the window. So it's clearly quite an obstruction of view. Um, the second is a writing desk area where there's a window and that is behind, also behind that fence. Um, and then the third is our dining room, which will will view the deck. Uh, you would have to imagine the deck is now going to be either a foot or two feet higher depending on where you are front and back. Um, and then there'll be a fence or a wall, I guess 36 inch protective railings would have to be. Uh, and you'd have to imagine that there because I haven't gone into where they are. And the first image in that package shows you the windows, uh, the building and the arrows going down to where our our windows are. So our concerns are mainly sight. There's no question that we will lose uh, lose sight of the of East Boston and uh, the, uh, the central the central harbor. Um, the second is the uh, the closeness is such that it will be very difficult to insulate the sound. I mean, literally, it's going to be. I think uh, you can, as far as the windows of our living room. Writing area, uh, people would stand, uh, I think, within 14 feet of where they would be. It's very close. Third is, of course, eye contact, looking at us or are looking at them. So it's not a simple matter to solve. And of course, the, you can see from looking at the images that the, uh, the fence will be a great obstruction for you. The head house going up another 18 inches is a problem not only for me, but or other neighbors in the Does the penthouse have to go up 18 inches? Yes, to yes. yes. to complement the, the, the stairs, to bring the stairs up to code. It's going up, it's going up only a foot, and it's going up about 18 inches wide. So it's going up, and it's going to be abutting the existing head house at, which is located at 2 Pops Hill Tarrant. So if you look on the first photo, it's not going up any higher in that existing head house at two Pops Hill Terrans. And it's, it's remaining in the same spot. So I, I understand the concerns in regards to the privacy wall that that is proposed, but we're certainly work, willing to work with the general meeting, work with the community uh, to make sure that we can adjust it, uh, we can talk to them how we can make it work. But the head house, I don't think the head house is going to have any effect on any of us as, um, as it has to be. As it has to be. Question to the architect. Uh, the, 
I, I thought that you couldn't have windows on the, um, I guess these are firewalls in between the buildings. So the building, the windows are between the buildings, if there was a, a, a same height building. How, how did that happen? And I guess another question I have is, it seems like on the, the roof deck, you have um, you know, the windows are kind of sloped away from those windows, and that a, a concern that you guys have with those windows? Exactly. That's the answer to it. Uh, regards to the first question, I, I don't know how those windows, I, I wasn't, um, part of that project, so I don't know how those windows were allowed on 540. Um, yet the, uh, uh, the angle of the, of the screen uh, was um, um, our attempt at trying to uh, give the neighbors uh, a little bit better of a view, and uh, I guess to clarify what the, uh, the design intent of the wall was, not only for privacy from a visual standpoint, but the hope was from, from a sound standpoint too, that it could create some sort of a buffer so that sounds uh, from the, from Dr. Khan's deck will not um, penetrate immediately to the windows. Um, that being said, we did try to design the, the, the uh, I'll call it a screen because it's not a solid wall. Um, if you see the pictures that are uh, floating around with the mock-up that we put up, um, it's actually constructed of slats. The slats are spaced about two inches apart. Um, and the hope was that that will give um, some privacy when someone standing on the deck, but will also offer a little light. So that, that was the design. Is this the first time you guys are communicating in terms of design? Not Maybe. since the last meeting. We had one meeting, but that meeting was our first meeting. Correct, and that's where the discussion started that uh, a mock up would be helpful to visualize. Anyone? Sure. Um, it, it's hard to appreciate. Um, What's your name? Jim Plasher. Jim Plasher. Um, same same way, 540 commercial. Sure, um, one unit down. Um, the layout is a little different in my apartment. Um, we have um, four windows in our dining room. Um, it's the same location as the residence. But we look out exactly at knee level to this deck. Um, and so every time I sit and have dinner, I will be looking directly at somebody's knees on that deck, about four and a half to five feet. Um, it's also blocked in significant light. I would have to lower curtains, lock out curtains, every time I have dinner um, at that point. There's no other windows in that particular area, and so we're totally blocked out at that point. Um, I'm not sure you can appreciate it from the photographs, but if you look one level down, there are some square windows that go across. And you can see how it's kind of just opposed. These are my dining room windows. chimney which is about 18 inches wide it's been removed which might be on the back of that photo uh, so it's been removed and the railing that that's going on not the privacy wall that's going around the back and the front of it it's just uh, in compliance with the code which would be 36 inches and it's not going to be a solid wall directly around so you'll we'll be able to see through it are there any other about us here any questions from anybody Paul? Paul Foster, 5 body commercial. You know, everybody is very, very busy, but if by any chance you have an opportunity to go by and take a look at what's mocked up here, I think you'll agree that you haven't seen anything else like it in the north end. And we got to all. In regards to what this uh, piece of plywood is in front of their windows. Will I be able to see it from the street if I walk down commercial? You could. Yeah. Still not really also. 
they were selling those looking hours from the head house into the unit. So when we eliminated those windows, um, and the point of that, we're willing to work with Mr. Green, especially since I know this uh, privacy wall was made, will affect you. We're willing to work with you on the design of it. That's why that was put up so we can hear your concerns. Um, it was designed so we can allow some privacy. It's certainly not something that Mr. Green or the residents at 540 want to see on that building. Then we're starting to make some adjustments. I think on the uh, August 7th date, we would like to move forward on the August 7th hearing due to the fact that the contractors and Mr. Dr. Khan would like to get in the building, living in the building, the contractors are going to be done, and we need to, contractors are there working on the stairs, and we need <coughs> to complete the head house to, you know, to complement the, the stairs so we can bring it up to code. So is that it? My name is Victoria Portolato. I live in the commercial street. I just wanted to share with you that we met and tried to see if we could agree on some sort of compromise because we would like, of course, to not, I mean, to uh, 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 try to uh, not be a problem for you. But unfortunately, we really believe that it's very difficult to find a compromise because uh, there are many problems. It's a problem of aesthetic, it's a problem of privacy, it's a problem of noise, of lighting, and and, uh, and it affects practically 90% of the building. So uh, uh, we wish we could find a compromise, but at this point we cannot find one. We really try hard. So I don't know really what could be the solution. Just to answer you know, some of your concerns in terms of the noise, it's, it's owner occupied, Dr. Khan, um, is going to be living in the establishment itself. He has three young children, um, ages 15, I'm sorry, 10, 10 to 15 years old. Um, I, I believe you know, we don't have full custody, or so we're going to have to discuss his personal life, um, but his family will be, children will be with him a, a lot as he, he's an active dad. Um, so he works, you know, he owns uh, several businesses. He, you know, it's not something that he's going to be partying up there, um, and I'm not going to call him an older fellow, but, you know, he's a, he's a professional and adult, understands, wants to be a good neighbor. In regards to the lighting, there's no proposal for any lights that are going to be on to this particular building, um, other than taking advantage of the beautiful location where the building is and the beautiful views. They can be able to sit out at night or during the day or whenever. Um, the pri privacy wall was built you know, thinking of the neighbors. If that's not something that is gonna work, then, it's, then that's okay. We, we go back to the drawing board and we can resolve this. Um, so, so that's pretty much it, you know. Is it, the West, if it was gonna be a non-owner occupied building, then I'm sure it would be a different story because we have concerns in the neighborhood with residents that have that have roof deck and they're absentee landlords and we have a lot of noise and a lot of fires and we have concerns and I'm well aware of those concerns. This is not what this proposal is going to be. We've seen in this neighborhood a number of owner-occupied roof decks that have gone up in this neighborhood and they've worked very well in this neighborhood. Okay, just, just a couple more questions. I know Victor has one and Bill has one. Victor, you... Yeah, three questions. Three uh, questions. What, about, what about one real quick? Um, <laughs> can't do it. Uh, the separation between the two buildings, I, I heard four feet mentioned, is that the actual separation? Or is at the, at, no, sorry, at the, at the tightest point, again, the, the wall was angled to try, to try to accommodate a better view from... Um, no, I mean the buildings themselves. The the buildings. Oh, they're touching. Okay. No, they're, they're, they're touching? Yes. There's, there's, there's no separation. Correct. No. Okay. Uh, second question is, what exactly is the zoning relief you're looking for? The floor area ratio and roof structure. Okay. And the building was already in violation of the FAR anyway, so that needed to be in compliance with But the roof structure with the alteration of the head house is a violation. Okay, and the final question is, uh, can a roof hatch be substituted for a head house? Okay. I mean, well, if you want, but there's an existing that is, head It house. would be code compliant? It would, if you could put a hatch, that would be code compliant, which it doesn't exceed 30 inches and a hatch and you can put a roof deck that's as of right, certainly you can do that. There's an existing head house, an existing stairway that goes up. Um, I'm sure we can, we don't want to 
be creative and cut corners and, and want to work with the neighborhood, you know, and there's an existing head house, I'd like to walk out to the, the roof. I don't know if it's impossible, but is it possible to put down the size of the deck? So the deck at 540 they have the concerns to, to to make this possible. He, he, he wants to enjoy a beautiful field that he has. Absolutely. That's one of the reasons why at our own expense we put it up. Is the first thing when we were trying to design it or Mike was designing it for me, my first concern was you guys. Not myself. I want to be able to enjoy the view. You know, similar to the the space that you have going out the front. Um, I can't extend and have balconies that are out on the front. So the best way is to go up. And uh, I didn't think it would be that big an issue or concern. I would say this, but this is one of the things that we're trying to do is just work with with everyone. <coughs> with my neighbors. Bill Lane has a question. Uh, Mr. Green and maybe some others who, uh, who could answer this question. Do you, have you heard, have you asked anybody about the value of your property? of your unit, how it would be affected by something permanent outside? I'm afraid to ask. Yeah. But as I'm also, so, that you know. Uh, now, you, you guys can go up to 55 feet and go another floor, right? There's a high restriction of 55 feet. If we wanted to apply to go up 55 feet, it's not as of right, and you can apply it just because you apply to go up to 55 feet, it's automatic. It's still going to create violations. Yeah. And you have to get relief from the zoning board, but 55 feet is the height limitation. It's not that you can automatically go up to 55. Feet. This is building. Uh, that is 45 feet. The one next to it. Um, 540. Yeah, that that built a long time. That yeah, that's, I, that, I think that might have been that might have been, been around a long time though. 55, but it's probably been built prior to the 55 foot height. Stephanie, I know I said only a couple more questions, but I want to make sure everyone gets to ask. Well, I, I don't really have a question, what I, except maybe at the council. Uh, it sounds like there's still a lot of disagreement, and I believe conversation between the, the, all the owners only started a couple of weeks ago, around the time of our CLC meetings. <coughs> okay, that would have been the last week in June. Um, I think both of our organizations have sometimes deferred the vote until people have had more time to work out an agreement. and I like to suggest that you might want to entertain well, just gonna ask night. Yes. Yeah. And August 7th, 8th, 8th. The issue with the deferral for the violations, we need to get the steers up to code. And in order to get the steers up to code, we need to alter the head house, which creates the violation, and to defer the vote to sometime in September, uh, looking at my calendar and the zone board of appeals, you're looking at late September. The con contractor and the construction work is, uh, are going to be gone, and we're not going to be able to get occupancy because it's not going to be in compliance. Um, I'm we, I, <coughs> what the board you? cannot take a position on this particular issue on the on the roof deck in particular. Well, the vote say, favor, can we, can we vote on, on, vote on, on the, the on head house? house and the floor area ratio and not the roof deck, not take a position and allow us to um, work with the, the abutters before the August 7th. Because I can say that I grew up in a house, I want to occupy the roof deck, and I think you know, it's, it's, it's a great amenity to have living in the north end, but I can also sympathize with well, I, with I, totally, you know, I totally I agree with you 100%. That's one of the reasons why we put up the wall, is just so everybody can get an idea of how can we work with it's actually to make it work. You don't I think it, until you actually experience There was a tree in front of my house my whole life and, and it got knocked down. And, and until the tree actually came down, you don't realize what a difference. It's crazy. And this tree comes down, all of a sudden I can see everyone across the street. I almost don't like it. I, mean, I, don't, I wanted them to like take the tree back together. <laughs> so I can sympathize with, with the abutters and sympathize with you for one thing. And it's a great view. Mm. But if you would like, we can vote on um, what the FAR and, and the head house and just maybe. Come not back. take a position on your roof. Is the head house an issue also? That's 
So that's why we can vote on it. They have to vote on it because if they don't vote on it, you can't get occupancy permit. So we'll vote on the head house and we'll vote on the FAR. But I'm asking you about They just spoke on is the head house an issue. The head house is itself. Okay. The head house? It's going up one foot. It's going up one foot. I'm sorry? It's going up one foot and I'll be two inches, right? Correct. Yes, so how but it has, it has a very large effect. Okay, well, it's it's up in his eyes. It's understood, but they, 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 they can, Mr. Toscano can take, we can take a vote on that, and if it's approved, it's approved, if it's denied, it's denied. Um, either way, it sounds like they, that's going to be done. To, to get the building with the code anyways. You, you, you need it done. <laughs> you know, and the planned examiner did. And you can, you can always go to the Zoning Board of Appeals on August 7th and, and, and you can speak at the ZBA hearing. I mean, we're just an advisory board to the city of Boston. You know, we'll write a letter saying whether or not we uh, uh, support uh, uh, or uh, oppose an application. And on August 7th at 10 a.m., you can go to the 8th floor at City Hall and they'll, they'll let you speak just like you spoke today. And I just want to assure the abutters that we are going to work with the abutters on the roof jack. Where we know if there's another meeting scheduled for Thursday. We're more than happy to meet tomorrow, Wednesday, or Thursday before the meeting um, to, to go over a possible redesign of the, of the deck. I mean, the view seems to be the most important thing with, with the uh, privacy walls. And then maybe uh, we can make some adjustments to that particular area. Absolutely. But I think the, the abutters would probably like to be able to discuss the possibility a hatch versus the head house. I think I'm speaking for everybody else, but I think that that's the case. The one that just re exists right here and the, on the other side of the building? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. This is our existing head house right here. I mean, hold up. Not any higher than that. One foot, 18 inch. There's a wall right here. Behind this door, there's a wall that's going to extend out to that wall. But that's not up against, is that? No, that's away from the dipper. <clears throat> Dan, this is just something that's done. I mean, probably have to go like to be ADA compliant and all that. I mean, that's basically it's not, what. It's not ADA, but it's, it's the uh, Massachusetts building. So the building code. Right, but the 36. So I mean, you basically you're just trying to bring this up to current code. I mean, the stairs have, have to be up to right. right. I mean, that's essentially. The code. And in right. order to do the stairs right. up to you have code, to make it you have wide. to adjust the, the head house right. to well, complement the stairwell. So and that's so why it's only going up one foot. It's, it's, a total of 30 square feet. The total square footage of the head house is going to be roughly 70 square feet. Right. Okay. That's correct. It's, it's going to be 72 square feet. Right now, it's it's, uh, it's around 40 square. Feet. So what we'll do is we're, we're going to see if there's a motion. We're going to do two separate motions. All right. Just to make it to simplify for everybody, with motion. We'll have a motion to uh, support the uh, erection of the uh, erecting the head house, and then we'll have one to uh, um, support the FAR. How's that? Is that, is that comfortable with that? I'm comfortable with that. Does anyone take a position on the, the roof deck and allow us the opportunity to work with that? Is the, is the FAR the same as the roof deck? Is the FAR, it's already in violation, the building itself is already in violation of the floor area ratio and just adding the extra 30 square feet. So they would deny, they would deny due to excessive floor area ratio. Um, the head house and the roof structure restrictions. So there's three basic denials in, in their application, am I correct? Correct, but the they, roof itself, the, the, the roof structure height, which is, which is um, Article 54, 18, just to give you a little idea. The, I spoke with the plans examiner, it's because it's the alteration of the head house, not because of the roof deck. The roof deck is actually building compliance to the dimensions of building compliance with the code. Um, so. But on, on August 7th, will you, will you go and seek approval for the roof deck? No, I, no I, don't, I don't want don't misunderstand me. Uh, hopefully we can work on an agreement with the abutters before August 7th for the roof deck. We really would love to go forward with the roof deck. But at the very least, I don't want the entire vote to be deferred because if it's deferred, Naval Council does not meet in August. We have an August day, it's deferred. We can't at least get a four area ratio and our head house alteration. Um, so let's do that, and if you want to move forward without. But I think this. I'm so 
He can go. Right. He can move forward with the zoning board of appeals, regardless of whether or not he came here and um, has come to the neighborhood council. But the neighborhood council will show up on the seventh and say we haven't voted on a roof deck. I'm right. sure that the we do have the will say that's that we haven't we haven't um, had a neighborhood process with the roof deck. And as a representative of Sal Martinez's office, we'll, we will go up and say we haven't had a neighborhood process regarding the roof deck. So I don't want to defer them if they don't want to be deferred because they have a date on the seventh. At the same time, they you know they'd like to move forward because regardless of mm -hmm. what happened to the roof deck or not, they still need to get an occupancy right. permit. So they need to they need to go to the zoning board of appeals for the FAI and for the uh, the headhouse. Am I correct? But, right. it's still but if they're coming to an agreement with them, there is an issue. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that the issue is the roof deck and whether or not they get a roof. The issue. I mean, and they can go to the zoning board of appeals on August seventh and speak what they need to speak. We're not meeting in August, and he needs to get an occupancy permit. So I would like the guy. To move into his house if he can. If zoning board of appeals gives him the okay on the FAR, then he can actually physically occupy that home. So what about the house? That's what I'm, I'm concerned. But we're going to vote on it. If we vote to deny it, we go to the ZBA right. and we say we voted to oppose it. Can we vote on the roof deck if the guy us want to vote on it? I'll vote on everything. I don't care. I'm just trying to accommodate everybody. But sometimes. Well, I think for us not to ignore the roof deck completely. But if you vote on the whole thing and the whole application is heard, Could possibly, if you vote on in particular the head house and the FAR, um, we could submit plans and the, the new plans take out the roof deck and just move <coughs> forward on the plans with the head house and the, on the I FAR. I don't want to spend too much more time on the issue. FAR. I don't want to spend too applied. much more time on the issue, but what I, I've, seen the zone, I've seen the zoning board of appeals make a decision and then say, why can't they make a decision on the FAR and the they have to vote on the plans that are in front of them. So they they, so they won't be they can't put a proviso when they're saying no on the roof deck that will just approve all or nothing. They, they could. I mean, just I mean, go if, you want if we send a letter saying we don't want a roof deck and the neighborhood sends a letter in opposition of a roof deck, they're just gonna say they, the hell's the neighborhood. All one application, so I understand that, but they've done provisos in the past where hey we approve with the proviso that no roof deck is built at this time. That, that, Stephen, I didn't interrupt you. That's your advice to the city. If the city exactly. says, okay, we don't give a damn, let them build a roof deck, yeah. they can say, thank you for commenting and build a roof deck. That's what he's trying to say. And that's, I think, what, we're, what we would like to defer. I mean, the, the, I, I, you know, we, we Not have, to interrupt you, how's this? How about we vote on everything? We're going to vote on everything, and we're going to do it three separate votes. We're going to vote on the head house, we're going to vote on the FAR, and we're going to vote on the roof deck. And I'll write a letter saying we supported the uh, um, the head house, we supported the FAR, but we opposed the roof deck, or whatever it is. I want to vote on it. I, I understand, where, and I don't want to take up any more time, and I understand this, but if the, if the vote out of the neighborhood council is in opposition to the roof deck, I, it's a tough vote to swallow due to the fact that the butters are willing and the pro petitioner is willing to work with each other to, no, to I, make I sure something you know is is done um, tastefully and something that works for both parties. Um, so I would like to point out this is the first time we have seen the document, and this is the first, the only, the only indication we had that anything was going on is we got letters in the mail. But nobody called us, we showed but, up. But typically that's how the process is. You get a letter in the mail and, and you have this forum to, to communicate. I mean, I have a lot of neighbors I've never met in my life. But I mean, I understand what you're saying, but- Yeah, but you, those neighbors weren't asking for something like that. I mean, perfect. But if they were, they'd have to send me a letter. And if I found out that someone at 408 Hanover Street was gonna add an addition onto their building and I wasn't notified, I'd be in this meeting and asking questions just like you are. I mean, this is the process. I, I don't know how else to put it. What if a, an agreement is reached, a compromise is reached between now and the 7th on the roof deck, and you can vote against the roof deck? Well, that's up to them. I mean, you can also table 
promotion. I just said I was going to take, I was going to defer further roof that. Yeah. Then, but they still have an issue. And I understand they have an issue. People have issues in support and in opposition. And what happens is we send a letter and the ZBA, we don't decide it. The Zoning Board of Appeals will make their decision on August 7th. But you cannot. That's understood. If you think they have issues, then you can vote against the house. I understand what you're saying, but it's like we're talking in circles now. If a person it's go five, there it's to other people. The head house thinks going to get approved. So who wants to make a motion? We're going to take two. We're going to take separate because votes. We're going to defer the roof deck. Yeah. We're going to defer the roof deck, and we're going to take a vote on the FAI. And we're going to take a vote on the on the head house. So is there a motion to? Um, I move to approve the application to increase the size of the existing head house in order to house a new code compliant staircase up to the roof. Is there a, is there a motion to second? All in favor. Five to one. Support. Head house. Six. Six to one, I'm sorry. A little uh three to three. Six to three. Does anyone want to make a, um, a motion to um, on the floor area ratio? I move to approve the vari a variance for the FAR violation of 536 commercial Second. Phil seconds. All in favor? FAR? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Six, one. Support. All right, Daniel. Mr. President. Mr. Mr. Thank you, Sorry, and uh, we assure you the attack. neighborhood that we'll work together with, with Mr. Green and your buddies at uh, 540, and we're more than happy if you have two minutes outside, maybe we can work out some, you know, And you should get a notice in the mail from the Zoning Board of Appeals. The City of Boston will send you something saying that they'll be at the ZBA on August 7th at 10 a.m., and you can, they give our buddies, people in support and opposition, they give them a minute. Correct, we're going to move on. Someone's got crap on July 20th. Okay. Please, Dr. Anthony Bover, Dr. B, you can get up here. Um, Dr. Bover has applied with the Zoning Board of Appeals for zoning relief to change the legal occupancy of the building from five residential apartments to six residential apartments, adding a one story addition to the existing building, not to exceed 55 feet in height. Oh, Mr. Tassano, how are you? Very well, Mr. President. How are you today? Uh, <laughs> For the record, uh, Dan Toscano, uh, attorney at law to my right, uh, Dr. Anthony Bobo, certainly needs no introduction uh, to this neighborhood. Um, Dr. Bobo purchased the, pil the building at uh, 7 Baldwin Place. If you look at your phone with the package I um, supplied to the, uh, the neighborhood, Mary Ann, actually, I think it's a new Seven Baldwin Place is the last, if you go down Baldwin Place, it's the last building on the right. When I did a Google search, uh, you can see it, it's the one uh, right before you hit the Knights of Columbus. It's right now with this five residential units, what Dr. Bobo would like to do is to add one story addition and create and increase the size of the building to six um, residential units. The size of the unit is gonna be approximately uh, 1,000 square feet. Um, and in regards to the, the height of the building, it's going to be at 52 feet and roughly the elevations is on the second page, 52 feet, 4 inches, I believe. And the, that doesn't include the head house. Um, we've worked with the, the architect of the building, which are two and associates of the, uh, we've done the architectural plans, uh, you know, and associates have been around a long time, done a lot of work uh, throughout the Commonwealth and throughout the city of Boston. And Dr. Bowman has made it quite clear to uh, the architect that the head house, which is not included in measuring the height, he does not want it to exceed 55 feet. So it's going to be a bulkhead, which we talk about. Uh, so to keep it under 55 feet uh, in regards to this particular building. However, the, according to the code, it's co-compliant up to 50, 52 feet um, on this particular property. Uh, the second, the third page you'll see is the floor layout of the uh, particular unit. It's a two bedroom, one bath, um, kitchen area, living area. Nothing fancy. The, 
you'll see a sun, there was a shadow study conducted, and uh, I'll tell you the reason for the shadow um, study. Um, we're working with our neighborhood, in particular, Marianne DeMato, who wants it. Marianne's certainly not a person that needs an introduction, and uh, Marianne has known me since I was in diapers. So, uh, been work, working with Marianne in regards to, um, Marianne had a concern. She owns a building at 13 Noise Place. And the back of 13 Noise Place and the back of 7 Baldwin Place, there is some space between the buildings. I'm not aware, of, I mean, I don't, I don't know how much space is there. Six to eight feet. Six to eight, six to eight feet. And Marianne, during the spring and summertime, gets some sunlight down in the mornings, the late mornings, as the sun reaches the highest point and it comes comes down into that little uh, alcove there and she gets some sun in the back of her building. Um, so there's a concern whether this would affect the sunlight um, from Mr. Model's building. We had a shadow study done by Chu and Associates and looking at the third page and in the fourth page will show you the, the result of that study. Although confusing, I did speak with the architect of the, um, who've done the, the st study, informs me that there will be minimal shadows cast, uh, minimal effect on the, the going up about one story. However, I still want to be able to assure Mary Ann that we're doing everything possible to work with her. Um, so certainly don't want to take my architect going on it, but that's what he shows me. Um, the violations that we see are the typical violations that in the North End when you're increasing the size of the residential dwelling is the open space. Um, we got gray yard insufficient and alteration of the roof, something that we just spoke about because we are adding the story. So we're we're altering the roof structure. And there is a violation on there, you'll, and the President may have seen it, is height restriction. However, this building is not exceeding 55 feet. So we can form the community. We formed the community that from day one, when we met with the DLC and we went with other bodies, it is not going over 55 feet. We anticipate as soon as, hopefully once we see, we have a hearing date of August the 7th, hopefully once we get support from this particular project, construction will be done It'll take about three months to add the, uh, the addition on to this building. It's going, scaffolding will be placed in the front of the building. The scaffolding will be up approximately one month. I have to speak with the contractor. If there's some rain or inclement weather that prevents uh, workers from working, then it might be any longer, but he assures me it won't be any more than one month with the scaffolding, but certainly that can change depending on weather. Um, the building, since we are changing the legal occupancy to get it up to code and once you change the legal occupancy, you have to put a sprinkler system in there. So a new sprinkler system will be placed inside the building. By putting a new sprinkler system, that involves digging up a uh, bulb in place in front of the building and add uh, new piping into the building. That is going to take place. Contractor assures me he does it himself. That's going to be one day. Some neighbors across the way of bulb in place had some concerns with parking. Um, Dr. Bulber, if there's any parking that is going to be eliminated for a day or two, Dr. Bulber will certainly supply some parking in one of our uh, adjacent garages here in the North End um, to make sure that the um, parking, the, the bodies are not inconvenienced. In regards to um, trash, as they're doing construction, trash will be picked up every couple of days. They come in with a truck, fill up the truck, and haul it out so there's no dumpster that's going to be placed out there um, to pick up any trash and be stored there at all. In regards to certain construction schedule, there will be a number of deliveries um, at this location. Maybe about 10 deliveries that are going to have to use ball in place. Talking with the contractor, he will put together a schedule for the abutters that we can hand out or post in the abutters building of when certain deliveries are going to take place and if it's going to affect them. You know. We have to make some concessions in regards to parking. We will during that day. The biggest issue in regards to going up um, one story is making sure Mr. Mono is comfortable with the possibility of uh, additional shadows. I certainly can't address that uh, with, with a certainty. I can only tell you that Chu and Associates did, did a study, but Marianne certainly has concerns, and if Marianne has concerns, I have concerns, Dr. Bova has concerns. I want to make sure that she is happy. No, more than happy to answer any questions. Anyone, anyone, council members, any questions? 
Yeah. Yeah. It's currently a five residential unit. It's currently and, uh, five residential units. In what, what are the uh, demographics of the current tenants that are in there now? Age, Age, profession, are they students, are they? You know, uh, a little of <coughs> everything. First floor is one apartment, which I stay on weekends, it's my apartment. Uh, second floor are three young female professionals. <coughs> the third floor is a gentleman, it's one person, uh, mid-30s, early 40s, does a lot of international travel. The fourth floor are four, I'm sorry, three gentlemen, two brothers, and a third gentleman. They all went to Brandeis together. They graduated three years ago. They were living in the building for three years. And the fifth floor is two girls. They're two Suffolk students that are moving. Thank you. <coughs> Have you had any uh, calls for parties to that address that you know? Uh, I haven't. I haven't. We try to read everybody the Riot Act, and I own a building on Prince Street as well. And I mean, people have parties. And, and I know the Suffolk students kind of get beat up a lot, but I found we have trouble with young people. It's not necessarily students, a little bit of everything. And I'm here seven days a week. So we, we try real hard to, to, to keep everything in control. Most of the time, we have success. I don't, I don't want to break roof decks. I mean, no roof decks. No roof decks. <laughs> it just looks like a roof deck on top. That's You're right. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it, it's not a roof deck. There'll be nothing. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's, it's going to be a promise, Steve. Okay. What, kind of, what kind of material is that going to be? So it's not going to be brick? What will it be? It's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be a brick veneer, or we have it's almost an orange stainless steel in the front. It's not copper. If we can get something close to that and match it, that's what we put. One of the biggest pet peeves on additions um, is the lousy material that you can with that uh, contrasts with the older material. Yeah. So that would be nice if we were successful to them. Have you shown plans to, um, obviously, you sh you've shown plans to ISD, and that's how you got the nylon budget. Um, does the BRA approve? Like additions or what, what, BRA, what, what, once you go before the ZBA, it's going to be BRA designed and built. Okay. And the planned exam which won't do a final sign. Okay. Now, just to let you know that the building to its right, if you're looking down Baldwin Place, so I'm afford I think it's B5, it's a little bit taller than that's owned by the Giswaldi family who supports um, Dr. Bova's petition. And it's a little bit taller than our building. And then the building, which I think encompasses it the entire. So this is the next block, that goes up to about yes. 55 feet. Two bedroom addition? So we're going to be coming even with it. won't be, it'll be a little bit taller than the Giswaldi building. Right, but the one after. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Any about name and address, even though we all know you? Yeah. Miriam, the number 13, Lewis Place. Um, the noise, there isn't any from Southern Baldwin Place. I'd be the first to complain. <laughs> um, going up, I believe, will significantly impact my building with the sun and the air and the light. Um, I didn't realize that it was going to be an impact because when I got the note, it had been raining for 120 days. And then one day the sun came out, and all of a sudden I had all the sun in my kitchen. And then I realized if the addition is built, I will absorb my sun. I have a picture of my bathroom. I just showed the picture that you oh, gave yeah, me. Okay, so okay. Basically the same picture. This is me. This is around noon time on a sunny day. So this is your building right here? This is my building. What building is this right here? This is 15, the notorious 15 noise place. <laughs> okay, and this is 13. So obviously they built it close a little bit than yours. Exactly. Okay. It goes by and almost the nights. Butt, and almost a butt's noise. I mean Baldwin. Yes. And it's yeah, yeah, the nights. Touches. Yeah. You know when the nights yes. if you go in the back of the nights? Yes. Mm -hmm. the building and it's noise. What's in between the buildings on Baldwin and the buildings on noise? Is it a courtyard? It's like. It's a seven foot courtyard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I. 
don't know when I'm going to know that it was it may be a problem. Did they go? I'm sorry. Well, have you thought about a, 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 a surface on that back? Have you talked about that with your... You know, we have. The, the problem is, as we're going up in that back area, that's where we don't have a back fire escape. We have an internal fire escape, and that's where it goes up. I mean, if, if we can do something with the architect, I gladly would. But that whole uh, back fire escape is, is brick, and the stairwell going up to our hatch or, or bulkhead is uh, has to be that same um, width. Oh, I see. So if, it would, if you had a slanted rear, then it would constrict the exit. Exactly. Have you looked I'm here for Pat Barrasso. He asked me to speak on his behalf. Um, he lives at Six Baldwin Place, also on first floor. He's concerned about uh, fire safety. He thinks that if there's a lot of construction going on, if there's a fire, that they won't be able to get to him. During construction? Yeah. And also, his daughter picks him up for, for dentist, doctor appointments and she needs to get down to pick him up in front. He's 97. I, I think we all know Pat. Uh, so he was in Leconte's eating yesterday. I was walking by and he waved me in. And he said, I want to go to the meeting tomorrow night. And his daughter said, no, 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 you can't. I'm not going to be around. So I just told him I'd come in and just voice the concern for so him. So his concern is obviously emergency vehicle right. access. Right, right. Um, exactly. He's 97. He's 97, right. He'll comfortable that they yeah. can get down there. But is he opposed to the, the addition, or is he just opposed to what's going to happen with the construction? He has concerns yeah, I think the it's the concern of if they, if someone had to get in to get him, okay. you know, he was he was concerned about it. So I just told him I'd come tonight and just speak for him instead of having him come here. Okay. So. Thank you. Yeah. But no, I mean, we're certainly, we had, we all have had, had to, done a lot for me in the past, and I and He's a great man. Um, we're certainly not going to do anything, and, and we can't. It's a private way. We're not going to obstruct safety vehicles from going down the private way. If there are deliveries, they, um, we are going to do our, the contract said to put together a schedule and we got some deliveries. So, you know, sheetrock has to be delivered. You know, we'll tell you how long it's going to be, and trucks going to be, you know, being in there, but nothing's going to be permanent to obstruct that. that you put way. a scaffolding up? Yes, scaffolding, we, he anticipates a month depending on what. The construction will be about three months. So, you have a question, Bill? Yeah, I, see I, I just, did, you, did she discuss the, the shadowing and everything? It seemed that it was minimal, but the, was that discussed with her? Is it like, I mean, yeah, I, I, no, I mean, or is it very tough to see? Right, very difficult to understand, you know, looking at the shadow study. I, I, I can only say it's been, it's done by two and associates, two and associates that, you know, um, a respectable company that does a, a tremendous amount of work in the neighborhood. But if Marianne has concerns, you know, I, I have a concern, Dr. Bova has concerns. Oh, sure. You know, I've been in the neighborhood, you know, I like, you know, so, yeah, we have concerns, so. I'm, I'm, I'm can can you talk a little bit about the shadow? Because as well, you well, said, what I can tell you is, as you can see on the, would be the fourth page, um, June 21st, on the left-hand side is what is existing, and on the right, what would be the impact of it. Um, you see the green building, that's 7 Baldwin Place, and to the left of the head house on, the, on Baldwin Street, that little space is the space between the two buildings that we're talking about. The sun goes down at an angle as it usually as it comes, rises in the east, and it comes straight up over the top, and it comes down into that little alcove there, that courtyard. I mean, looking at it, it doesn't appear. I spoke with the um, the gentleman who did the shadow study and told me that during the winter, spring, and fall, there's not going to be any effect on the shadow, but there will be in the summer that will have a little effect in late morning, early afternoon. So, but once again, you know, I, I, I want to be able to do everything I can to, to cooperate with Marianne. Anyone else? 
for Walker? I don't know. I'll be honest with you, Tony. It's a difficult question to answer because Dr. Bolton wants to go up one floor. Um, really, are we ever going to know what the impact of the sun is going to be until the thing is constructed? You know, um, we've done a shadow study. Um, like I said, it's done by a reputable company. But you know, how how, how do we how do we concession? Right. To once, once it's filled, once it's the, filled the sunlight the is gone, right. she's deprived of whatever little sunlight she gets for whatever period and you know, portion of, of the year. I mean, is there some way to push the... the push it back push, a foot or two? Would it push it back? I mean, will that change the impact? Would you try to scale it back? I, I gladly would. That The problem is the stairwell trying to meet with the compliance going up to the roof. It's right in the back. And our buildings literally are right across from each other with seven feet that, uh, seven foot courtyard uh, difference. But it's literally right in the center where, again, we don't have a fire escape. We have an indoor fire escape that I think was added on to uh, years ago. But, I, I mean, I'll, I'll gladly ask the architect if we could convict someone I'd love to. If, I, I know Arthur he's he's brilliant. He is brilliant. And maybe it wouldn't be so unreasonable to ask him if there was some reflective material that you can put on the back side of the building that will reflect the sun down past your structure and then maybe help hit the building and then maybe she would actually get more sunlight than she does now at certain times well, of the year. Uh, thank you. I mean, that sounds uh, that. Uh, yeah. yeah. When's your day? August 7th. They, they used to do that in ancient Egypt to, to add, like the sunlight, they used to put mirrors down to add, yeah. add to all the temples. And I mean, it works very well. And you can illuminate basically anything with some sort of reflective material. Aren't you going to do my teacher in school? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would pay off, Tony. <laughs> I mean, my question is, we only want to move forward if you're comfortable. You can, are you comfortable dealing with Dr. Bowden? He seems like well, a very, very yeah. reasonable guy. So would you care if we voted and then you and Dr. B can sit down a few more times and Daniel can figure everything out? It's a catch-22. And if you're not happy, you let us let me know. And yeah, no, perfectly I'll happy. go straight out Dr. Bowden. <laughs> I, just needed, I just needed to voice my concerns. That's understood. Anyone else have any questions? Oh, I, wish be, I wish this was always like this. That was beautiful. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Does anyone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to support the uh, Baldwin, seven Baldwin to my place to go up my story. Does anyone second the motion? Second. So we have um, a motion to uh, change the legal occupancy of seven Baldwin place from five residential apartments to six residential apartments. Any one story addition, not to exceed 55 feet all in favor. And to work with the to work with you. All in favor. Unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Nice. Oh, good. 55 North Washington is uh, deferred. We deferred. Defer. Thank you. So four, four powers court. You're good to go. Yeah, 55 is not here. 55 North Washington. Okay. They withdrew their application. I don't. I think they're going a different route. They're not going to put a restaurant there. I think they're going to try to um, um, rezone to residential. You can stand up here if you have. You must be Rick Adams. Can I have Danny's thing? <laughs> <laughs> I used to be on the neighborhood council and I was always hungry way before this. Eight years ago to go up. Um, at the time I was applying because my mother was going to be moving in with us and uh, she's since gone into a nursing home and now my kids are coming back from college. So I've already been approved by both councils, by the CBA, BRA, Board of Appeals. For what year was this? Uh, four. All the way up to all the way up to six, they kept changing what they wanted me to. Once it got to ten ten Mass Ave, they kept changing what they wanted me to do for uh, <coughs> uh, like fire sting, not fire sting, uh, sprinkler systems and, and all that. And we had initially 
everything we're going to do is going to be kind of like historically correct to what was on Hanover Street, uh, the same type of inside roof with the, those types of windows and all that. And uh, again, we got everything improved, but then when we got to 1010 Mass Ave, it became a big issue of tearing up Powers Court to bring a four inch water main in. And um, we had some sick neighbors and things like, a lot of things were going on at Powers Court that it just wasn't feasible to do. So we re-engineered the whole project all over again reduced the glass to brick ratio to be five windows instead of six um, and then went back in front of BRA again got approval again so this is right now my head house comes to here and there's a fence that goes along here so it's just being replaced with a mansard so that's what it's going to look like. Yeah. Um, and it, it got changed from basically six windows to five makes it uh, that I don't have to tear up Powers Court and put four inch water main. Basically, the city wants me to pay for the hydrant if I kept six windows. So I went down to five, re engineered everything, had all these reports, all these studies done. 30 grand later, and then they said it's all been expired and I have to start from scratch. So they, we went back around, it was all quick notice, but I got all my, all the owners next to me to sign for the past couple of days. Uh, there was only uh, two absentee owners, uh, two absentee owners that uh, never got back to me, but I did call them leave the messages. Uh, How high is the, um, what's the height of the building? The new all below, below, all the, below everything. Uh, Everything's all been approved, even by the Board of Appeals. Okay. They want to see. They want to see this report tomorrow. It's something about using two-inch main that's already in my system. Even though I'm not required to have a uh, sprinkler system, I'm still putting one in. Um, basically, I'm adding a, um, a bedroom. When I did this, I didn't just go up a floor uh, for my neighbor. I made an L-shape addition instead of just a, a full addition. So I let all the light and wind and the air studies, we did it all. And so I compromised and, and, and uh, basically cut my construction by like 25%, or maybe 20% I took off just to make everybody happy. In the, Do you have any of the old paperwork on you in uh, 2004? It's all the same paperwork. Nothing's changed. These are the you're old. asking for the exact same thing minus the water meter, minus that nonsense. I don't need it now because I went to five so windows. Like that, that drawing is the difference. Well, that's the old, the old okay. rules. This is yeah. And this, this is what they sent me. Is what I was same ratios and all that. But not compliant. I, I don't think there's any house in the north end that could be compliant. Are you going to have a roof deck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Owner occupied? Is this yeah. how many units in the building now? Three. And it's going to stay three or it's going to be stay three? three. Stay no, three. this is just adding a bedroom in my unit. Gotcha. My tenants don't have access to the roof. will be a bedroom in your unit? Right. My tenants don't have access to the roof. How are your butter notified? Yep, they all signed. All the owners. Uh, McGinnis, uh, I forget his name. Peter? Peter. Peter McGinnis is the only one that didn't uh, respond. And I act, the message was, call me if you have any questions. So he didn't respond back, but even Matt Gallo signed it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Yeah, you he voted the same way? Well, I, I was opposed to him going up, but, but no, he was no. going to cover all the windows. So, I mean, we, we, both went up, yeah. we both went in front of the board at the same time. The difference was I totally compromised on square footage and compromised on everything. But still eight years later, I don't have anything. How much? It's less than fifty-five. I don't. I, I don't even remember. Fifty-two. Maybe less than 52. It's, it's less than everybody else. Any other questions on the council? The head. It's the same head house I have. It's just up. The roof deck is just what I have now. It's just up. I have a roof deck now. There's a picture of that. 
So on all four, the plans are exactly the same. Nothing's changed yeah. except for the five yeah. windows. They changed one word here, penthouse. They made it well, because penthouse. because they said, uh, are you going to finish the inside of the room? And I said, I'm not going to leave it up here, a room. I'm going to finish it. So he said, you better to use the word penthouse. Yes. Okay, any questions from any of us here? Anybody here have a question? Or three questions, Victor? Only one. Okay, buddy. Uh, I'm curious about what, what is the connection between um, uh, water service and windows? How is it that a glass to brick can, ratio can you walk in, cases of, in cases of fire? Since power's caught. Well, that's where literally all these numbers, all these signatures were got in an instant because we literally all live right next to each other. Everyone sees everyone's kids, everyone, everybody, every single day. So the houses are only 10 feet apart from each other. So when your houses are that quick, that uh, that close, they don't want fire to be able to jump from one building to another. So even though I don't have to, I'm putting a sprinkler system over every window. And it was a compromise with 1010 Mass Ave. That what they wanted me to do is to bring a fire, uh, a four-inch main up the end of Powers Court, and basically put a fire hydrant at the corner of the building. But it would have really disrupted Powers Court, everybody there. I mean, it's literally the same application. I'm There's nothing. I let, let, let all you guys. So actually, the wording, though, I guess the big thing that triggered something off was penthouse versus headhouse. Yes. Pentel sounds better, so it does sound better. Anyone else have any questions? No? Does anyone want to make a motion or does anyone want to look at the before anyone? I'll make a motion uh, to support construction of a one story vertical addition, including the penthouse at the full power support. Anyone second the motion? Second. Motion second. Um, so, a motion on the floor to support um, construction of a one story vertical addition, uh, including a pentos at four pounds. Put all in favor. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Good luck. Does anyone have anything else they want to discuss while we're here? The, the discussion forum piece of the agenda. I stink at word, so I had to kind of just erase it so the agenda looked nice and neat. But um, <laughs> do you have any other issues you want to discuss? Or? You're speaking you don't meet in August. Right. We do not meet in August. Thank you, Phil. Yes, we go on vacation for the month. Oh. All right. Meeting adjourned.